What's going on? And welcome back to Doctors Gan and Mo. So we're just going to lay it out there. Residency sucks. Intern year of residency sucks even more. Sorry interns, but we know that's the truth. In this video, we're going to show you how Gan and I both managed to make six figures during our residency training. And you can too. But before we do so, we want to give you a taste of what residency life is like for all of you future residents out there. We've all seen the memes. We laugh at them. And at the same time, some of us cry because we know it's true. We wake up in the morning at a time that many people look at us like we're crazy before anybody even thinks of waking up. We round on patients that don't like to get disturbed before 9 a.m. So we get kicked out of the rooms. We get lectured by senior residents and attendings we're lucky if we even get a 10 minute lunch break amidst all of that. And we stay late every day. And we feel great if we make it home by 10 p.m. just to get five hours of sleep. Just to wake up at the crack ass of dawn to do it all over again with a big smile on our face. Oh yeah, the fun doesn't stop there. As a matter of fact, most residents will work approximately 80 hours a week with one shift that usually lasts about 28 hours. And that might happen about four times a month only. During my intern year of residency, I was on call every other week for seven straight days, 24 hours a day. That's 36 weeks out of the entire year that I was on call. That means my best friend at night was a pager. Now that you have all the layers and frosting of this so-called residency cake, here's a little cherry on top. Bloop. The average United States medical resident gets paid a whopping $63,400 a year, according to Medscape's Residency and Salary Debt Report 2020, a 3% increase from 2019. Hourly breakdown, you ask? Our pleasure. Now $63,400 a year divided by the 52 weeks in the year, that gives you approximately $1,219 per week. Now let's divide that by the 80 hours that most residents work in a week. And that will give us $15.24 an hour. Now you're better off working at Target or flipping burgers at McDonald's. But don't forget about those taxes and social security you gotta pay. A resident salary places them in a low tax bracket, 22.9%, leaving them with an after-tax income, pending what state you practice in, about 77.1%. That equates to roughly $930 a week. Now. The poor resident, and we mean poor resident, that equates to $11.34 an hour. Imagine that. That's fantastic, right? I, for one, would be super content with the hourly rate during my residency training. Unlike my friend Gan, I actually had to pay for my residency. In dentistry, most residency and specialty programs are actually programs where you have to pay to attend. How is that possible? Because these programs can. Not only do I have to have killer grades and a killer personality, obviously, to get into my pediatric residency program, I also had to pay a little over $100,000 to attend my program. Now again, Please spare me your sob story. No tears here, my friend. So instead of accepting debt and accepting that low hourly rate, we decided to generate some income ourselves during our training years. During my first year of residency, since I wasn't allowed to moonlight, I attained my real estate license. And that led to a lot of opportunities. I was surprised with how many people I knew needed a real estate agent to help them out. Getting my real estate license was not all that difficult, especially during my residency. Realestateexpress.com, link in the description below, offers a complete online learning environment, which again was great during residency. And once I got my real estate license and did all the necessary CEs, I found a brokerage that provided low commission fees. And during my first year of residency, my first year, with all the hardships of residency, 
I was able to generate an extra $30,000. Mo, on the other hand, took a different approach. Instead of accepting going further in debt during my pediatric dental specialty training, I decided to continue being a personal trainer for the first three months of my residency. And getting the online certificate is super, super easy for all of you gym rats out there. Now, I was able to typically make about $40 to $50 an hour, and I typically worked about 20 to 25 hours a week. Then an epiphany hit me. Why don't I reach out to some dental clinics and see if they'd be interested in me providing pediatric dental services in the evening and on weekends? And that way, I can make some of that doctor money I always heard about. And that is how Moonlighting started. And that is exactly what I did. I reached out to several dental clinics and convinced them to expand their hours in their clinic. So those clinics would open up from 5 to 9 p.m. And on weekends from 9 to about 3, I took no days off. I was working nonstop. But the biggest advantage is that those hours were a slam dunk. The kids were out of school. It was the weekends. People were more willing to go in and no other competitor in the market offered those hours. So we were getting all those clients and we were super, super busy. And all those challenging cases, I would take them to my attendings when I go into the clinic and into the hospital the next day. And that provided me with invaluable experience I wouldn't have had otherwise. And the plus side, I was able to generate about twenty to $25,000 a month during my residency training. So. What did we do with all that extra income? Well, we splurged. We went shopping. We went to the finest dinners in Miami. Mo even bought himself a few nice watches along the way. Yeah, right. Get out of here. We invested our money into paying off our student loan debt. In addition, we maxed out our Roth IRAs and set up emergency funds using high interest bearing savings accounts which back then were about 1.7%, much higher than they are today. I actually just got an alert saying that Goldman Sachs is down to 0.5%. Oh, might as well just hold on to my money outside. And we invested wisely in the open market. And it gave us a head start into our real estate investing journey. And that passive income generated from real estate really, really solidified our six-figure income during our residency training. But most importantly, we were able to actually get an engagement ring and propose to our future wives. And fiance during our residency years. Even before we started residency training, Mo was a personal trainer and I drove for Uber and Lyft. Oh, the stories that I have about those days. And although it wasn't an insane amount of money, since we had to keep up with rotations and school and studying and all that fun jazz, it allowed us to learn about business and personal finance. Residency training will be that chapter in your life when you feel like you're pushed to your limit. You will feel exhausted and you will feel that you won't have time to squeeze anything else in there. However, if you're a true hustler, you'll always find a way to carve out some extra time so you can invest in your future self. So you can generate some extra income so you can invest in your future. Now if you like this video, make sure to gingerly tap that like button and we'll see you next time.